Hi, my name is Amy Howard. It's absolutely impossible to open up Pinterest, a magazine, and not see incredible looking antique mirror. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just take regular mirror and make it look like it was 200 years old. Now it is really important to get real mirror. Some people will go to flea markets or a place and they're actually trying to strip the back off of a mirror and process it like I'm gonna be showing you today, but it's not real mirror. So we wanna make sure that we start with real mirror. And one way to be able to know that is on the back of the mirror that uh, the reflective is gonna be on the front and on the back it's a baked on gray finish. This is really important that we've got to get this off to be able to control the surface that we're gonna be working on. Years ago when we started experimenting and we wanted to be able to recreate antique mirror, we would literally have to go in the parking lot behind our studio and we would try to take muriatic acid and we would try to go through it with some nails and try to recreate that. But unfortunately, it didn't give us the beautiful composition that I'm gonna be able to show you how to do today. So one of the first things you need to do is we're gonna take our antique mirror stripper. It's gonna be really important that you protect your hands. Now for easeability today, I'm actually gonna be using um, some surgical gloves, but I would prefer that you use stripping gloves. Those are gonna go up a little bit further on your arm and they're gonna give you a lot more protection. The other thing is, because we are working with a stripper, we want to make sure that we're in a very well ventilated area. So. I'm going to take my um, antique mirror stripper and I'm gonna shake it really well. And then I'm gonna pour it directly on the back of my mirror. Also, I would suggest, um, I'm not doing it because of easeability today and teaching you, but it is good to wear eye protection. If you wear glasses, that's great. If not, it would be good to be able to put on some goggles. So I'm gonna pour it directly on top of my, the back of my mirror. I'm gonna put my cap back on. Using a foam brush or a foam roller. If you're working on large pieces, you can use a roller. And in production, when we're actually making um, antique mirror, that's what we do. So you notice I'm making sure that I get 100% coverage. And I'm also wanting to make sure that some areas are not thinner and some are really heavy. Unfortunately, just through experience, I've noticed that if I think that more will do it better than less, that is not the case. If I get it puddled up too, too heavy, it actually will not bubble up nicely, where if I get it all done the same. Now, can you see the process already starting to happen? So what happens is it's starting to lift this baked on back of enamel away from the mirror itself. So you see how quickly this is happening. Now I will tell you in a warmer environment, it's gonna happen faster than if it's colder. All right, so, loving it, loving it. See how quickly that happens? So I'm gonna take some craft paper and I'm going to place it after it's all started to release and you'll see that it's um, crinkly looking. I'm gonna lay my craft paper all at one time over it and holding it in place, I'm going to burnish it to where the entire surface is going to lift with my paper. And you wanna lift it away from yourself like this, so that way it lifts off in one complete piece and you're protected. So I'm gonna roll this up very carefully because it does have the stripper on it. I don't wanna get that on my arms or my wrist. Now, I'm going to do a second stripping of the mirror because you'll notice in here there's a coppery color where it's almost a reddish color. And you'll also see the detailing where it looks crinkly to where the stripper actually was crinkled. So we wanna get rid of that because that's not desirable in our final product of our antique mirror. So I'm going to take my sponge brush and with just a little bit of pressure, I'm gonna get any residue of leftover mirror. And you, now you'll start to see this beautiful clear color of my mirror because that copper, copper is going away. See how I'm turning my sponge brush? I'm making sure that I'm getting the, the edges really well. I'm coming back. I'm just wanting to make sure that this 
entire area is all nice and white, real clear. Now, I'm gonna come over to a water bath. You can use a water bath like we've done on smaller pieces. We'll use a Tupperware container. We'll just fill it up about a quarter of a way through, um, a quarter of a way up, room temperature is fine. I'm gonna take my simple green that's been diluted and I'm gonna spray it on top of my mirror. And I'm gonna bathe it. So you'll see a lot of those little particles that were sticking will start to come off. And in the studio, we'll literally set up three different little Tupperware baths like this, so that way you're rinsing it once, twice, and three times, and that way the baths will get a, a little cleaner at each step of the way. All right, I'm gonna turn this over, because I wanna make sure that I have a nice, clean surface area that I'm working on. So you'll notice my mirror here is, it's wet. And let's say, for instance, you're working on a large piece of mirror. It's perfectly all right, you can use a hose, you can use it, you can be outside and do this. Um, in order to be able to clean it. Don't forget to use the simple green though before you actually use the water from the hose. The other thing that you need to remember is now we've taken this back off and it's very, very susceptible to scratching any type of um, movement on the back of it. I wanna keep my fingers away. I wanna respect the fact that I'm getting ready to antique it and I don't wanna scratch it. So I'm gonna take my antiquing mirror solution, which is part two of this process. I'm gonna shake it very well put it in my plastic container. Then again, I'm taking my lint-free rag that I'm working with. These are great t-shirt materials that you can wash and reuse. And I'm gonna come back and in a, a pattern, I'm moving around, I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna come in and go along the sides. I don't wanna create lines. I don't wanna create borders. I wanna move around to where it's very organic looking. And you'll start to see the oxidation process happen. See the colorization that's already starting to go darker? Hear that hit drag motion? Hit drag, hit drag, hit drag, hit drag. Cause I'm patting that around. Oh, I love it already. You will notice that there is an odor to the antique mirror solution. So you just wanna make sure that you're working in an environment that it's, um, there's, if there's a nice breeze, that's okay. You just wanna make sure that it's not closed in. It's not offensive, um, but it smells kinda like eggs. So after I've come back and I've saturated the entire area, you're gonna start to see it turn these beautiful blue colors, um, grays, reds, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna come back in a circular motion. If I want, I can take a little bit more solution. And I'm gonna go in circles, just again to make sure that I've gotten a nice, even finish on my mirror. Remember that we're working in reverse. So we're working on the back of the mirror. We've stripped the back off. We've actually antiqued it from the back but you get to see all of your beauty from the front. That's what's going to create the antique mirror. So as it starts to pull through an antique, I know that those are going to be the areas when I put my paint on the back of it, it's going to look like dark black antiqued mirror. So I'm starting to see this pull up. I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit more. Now, if I want to be able to keep it as antique mirror, I'm going to stop at this point, but I want to be able to make it look a little older. I want to make it look like a mercury mirror. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rinse it. Again, I'm being very, very careful because it's very susceptible to scratching. And I tell people when you're working on the back of this mirror, don't even use paper towels because paper towels can act like a fine sandpaper. Even more important, why we need to continue to work with lint-free t-shirts or rags. Then I wanna come back and I'm gonna just dab it very carefully, making sure that my jewelry or nothing is going to hit it or scratch it. 
And there again, see how I'm jumping around. It's always about being organic, organic shapes. I don't want to be going in lines and creating patterns like this. So once it's completely dry, if you need to, you can hit it with a hair dryer. It's going to speed up the process a little bit, but remember, when you add the heat to it, it may, may, it may make the mercury antiquing process happen even faster, so be careful about that. In this particular instance, I'm just going to use a rag. Looks like I'm about dry now. So all I've done is I've taken my antique mirror solution, which was our second process, I poured it into a little spray bottle and it's like a mister. So I'm going to just spray it here and there. And what happens, there's a reticulation process that will start to take place to make it look aged. You wanna make sure that you don't hold the bottle over too much where it actually leaks on it and makes large circles. I'm just gonna let this set and it's going to start aging it and it's gonna have these beautiful little reticulated circles on the front of the mirror. So as it's starting to age, I'm going to be looking at it to see what it looks like. So see right here, see how it's starting to age? Ooh, I love this. All right, you know what? I'm going to mist it one more time and then I'm going to rinse it. So you're going to mist, dry, mist, dry until you get it to the point that you like it and then you're going to clean it. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here into my bath. Very carefully, I'm just gonna clean the back of it. Again, there's no cleaning solutions or anything in this. This is just tap water. I'm gonna pat it dry. A lot of people love how the back looks. But you can't leave it this way because it's not protected. Remember, it's gonna scratch. But let's say, for instance, you did wanna be able to keep it like this. You could seal it with a lacquer. And I would probably suggest putting a clear piece of glass on top of it just to protect it. So after the back of my mirror is completely dry, I'm going to take my one step. So remember to turn the can upside down for about 30, 40 minutes. That allows all the yummy goodness inside the natural ingredients to come to the top. Then give it a nice shake. Then you wanna make sure it's stirred up really, really good. All right, so after my, the back of my mirror is completely dry, I'm gonna take my one step and I'm gonna paint it on with a sponge brush or a foam roller. And what this is doing, it's sealing it again. Remember when I took the back off? This is going to give it its protection and it's also going to allow this beautiful black color that I'm putting on the back to show through. The exciting thing that you can do with Antique Mirror is when you've antiqued it, you can come back and use bright colored lacquers. You can use all different kinds of color and that color is what's gonna show through on the Antique Mirror. So I'm gonna make sure I have 100% coverage I'm gonna allow it to dry about 20, 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna have a beautiful mirror that looks like this. So it has a multitude of uses. I can use it as backsplashes in a kitchen. I can use it on walls. I can use it on furniture. It's just amazing. Here's a great example of beautiful antique mercury mirror. You see how easy it is. Now go enjoy the bragging rights.